Hello, John Milburn here. This is Laws 11057 Introduction to Law. And the purpose of this YouTube clip is to describe what I believe should have been in your reflective journal, which is all about assessment number three um, for 11057. Now, in this exercise, I invited you to create a reflective learning journal. To do so required you to publish your notes in a blog and share your comments with your colleagues. Essentially, it's an exercise in communication. After the reflections, you're then to pr produce a short report, no more than 1,500 words, answering some basic questions and comparing your experiences with those of your colleagues by reference to their reports on their blogs. Now, the journal can be a very useful per, um, for examination purposes as well as actually dealing with the assessment piece itself. And beyond that, creating a reflective journal is very good practice in all of your courses. So publishing your thoughts and comments onto a blog provides you with the opportunity to work on communication, collaboration, and self-management skills, all of those things that we discussed in chapters 9 and 10 of the textbook. It is not intended to be a difficult exercise, in many ways, it's a subjective exercise because we do encourage you to use the word um, I in, in the context of starting a sentence. What we're really looking for, what I'm really looking for here is whether you've picked up on key concepts for the week and whether you've identified some standout issues that really engage your imagination. If you were able to upload your Moodle profile and create a blog, then you obtained four marks. I can guarantee that will be the easiest four marks you ever receive in doing your LLB program. But anyway, that's what it was. Um, you then received 10 marks in relation to the work that you did on the weekly notes. And of course, the final six marks were allocated to the uh, final report. Now in that final report, I was looking for your commentary as to the topics of interest, topics of less interest, and your, your commentary about communication and collaboration skills. To do well in this assessment, you were required to demonstrate insight and engagement. Now, as you determined, I'm sure, this is not an exercise where I simply wanted you to summarise the material. I was keen to see how you went about articulating your opinion and providing support for your commentary. As I read the material, I was keen to see um, what you found to be the most interesting part of the course and why. To do well in this assessment, you had to be honest. Part of the process of reflection is to consider your own strengths and your weaknesses. And I was keen to see if our discussions regarding self-management and res re resilience resonated with you throughout your commentary. The process should also provide you with insight as to how you wish to practice. Are you a theorist or are you practical? So I asked myself in assessing your work whether you were realistic and insightful in your commentary. Did you identify these areas of strengths and weaknesses? And I was keen to know how you intend to ultimately become an effective legal practitioner or otherwise use your law degree. So what steps are you taking now to prepare for examinations and future studies? I ask that question for your immediate reflection, but also to indicate it was something that I was looking for in marking the assessment. So what specific things are you doing now to assist in self-management skills? Have you determined an exercise regime? Have you developed practical skills in relation to time management, adopted a healthy lifestyle, found a way to balance work and other commitments? Now, some of the best answers provided honest reflections in relation to some of those matters. These things are, and they remain, very important. Now, during the course of marking, I was keen to see if you'd gained some insight into legal research and the appropriate skills in referencing all, of course, in accordance with the Australian Guide to Legal Citations. Have you learned to access appropriate sources of law 
and apply the information correctly. That was some, some of the task that I was looking for in uh, reading your journals. Can you maintain a legal argument and support it appropriately? Do you reference your material? In addition, do you use footnotes in an appropriate manner? This is very important. It is apparent to me, through reading your material, that you understand the absolute importance of ethical behaviour in the context of practising law. Have you gained an insight, appropriately, into the Australian Solicitor's Conduct Rules of 2012 in a practical sense? I was also interested to read your comments about collaboration skills. Have you tried to be active during the course? Have you participated in online discussions through Ucrew? And importantly, have you become an effective listener? You may have gone into this course feeling a little unsure, a little daunted. You may still feel that way. However, have you noticed that involvement and hard work, determination and collaboration assist you in feeling more at home and more confident. During the course of the assessment, I was keen to read your comments about your general approach to study and the practice of law. To be successful in law, you do not need to be loud or aggressive, and many of our best lawyers are quite the opposite. Have you considered the audiovisual presentation with Judge Moore's own QC? You might think that his honour provides a good role model for the way in which you should conduct yourself in practice. Now, while I'm saying you don't need to be loud or aggressive, you do need to be confident. You do need to be assertive when required. You also need to be proactive and to take initiative. Many of the comments that you made in the blogs touch on those issues, and there were a lot of honest comments about how you have made some transition of sorts throughout this course. I urge you to continue in that process. In your comments, you made some statements about potential study and career paths, and I hope that you've gained some knowledge to enable you to work towards an ultimate ambition. As we discussed in week one, starting to narrow the scope of your interest and study is not a bad thing. And I think the way of the future is increased specialisation in uh, provision of legal um, work. Now, in some of the papers, students made excellent comment about their values. And you need to think about and apply values, such as integrity, hard work, structure and systems, honesty and responsibility. And you need to do that within the context of an established, but still dynamic legal professional framework. Of course, I was very interested in any comment that you chose to make in relation to maintaining your academic and professional integrity. Have you learned something about the expectations of Parliament, the courts, the public, and importantly, the profession that are upon you in your practice? Have you considered your strengths and weaknesses, your opportunities and your threats? Now, a SWOT analysis might seem a bit old fashioned, but it is very important. And right now, I need to ask, you need to ask yourself, what are the significant risks to you? Have you addressed those risks? And how are you building on your strengths? So a good answer dealt with some of those issues, but I'm making the comment not, not just to tell you what was involved in the marking, but actually to ask you to consider that right now. Now, a good answer provided a reflection about legal thought process and becoming a legal or creative legal thinker within the context of some sound structure is an ideal situation. I like MIRAC, M-I-R-A-C, identify the material facts, identify the legal issues, state the legal rules, apply them and then provide a conclusion. I actually like, if I could do it, a C MIRAC because I like to state the conclusion at the start as well. So in your paper, I was looking for ways in which you have identified the, the ways you need to improve to be m even more effective as a student and then ultimately as a practitioner. 
Have you developed appropriate methods to become an independent learner yet collaborate when required? And have you got the skills to become a good advocate or a better advocate for your client? I was interested to read about the legal concepts that you regard as important. Many of you did provide some good commentary in this regard. Some of the more common ones were separation of powers, judicial activism, Marbo, native title, duties of a lawyer, legal ethics, access to judgment, uh, justice, etc. Finally, I, determined, I was determined to see whether you have presented your paper professionally and well. You know I'm strong on this, and I really don't want any of the students from Laws 11057 to go through to study other subjects in this course, in this degree, without having the basics right. Okay, spelling and grammar, that is very important. Do you use active sentences? Alternatively, are you still using passive sentences? Did you use short sentences to good effect? I was keen to see that you presented your paper in a uniform manner. What we don't want is a variety of fonts, a mixture of styles, in, inconsistent formatting. And again, you know I don't like that. Have you learnt to proofread your work? Sometimes it's um, just a matter of reading it out aloud before you submit it. Have you learned the basics? Do you capitalise the word act when speaking of legislation? Do you type case law and legislation in italics as required? For the most part, I'm delighted with the progress that many of you have made in that regard. Please continue. Write in plain English. Join the plain English movement. Avoid legalese. Thank you for your paper. Overall, I was very happy with the work that was done. All the best.